Uh, over 30%, about 36% is from uh, state funding, about 5.6% of that is in federal funding, and then about 1% is in other, uh, whether that's interest that we've gained. So that's important to understand in a very large context of how we actually get funding in our district. Our, pupil, our per pupil funding, you'll notice that Queens County is there in red, all in green are the Eastern Shore counties. And what's unique about this slide is when you look at that number of 13,358, that is uh, the state floor, or that's actually local funding, state funding, and federal funding to be able to come up with that number. And so if you look at the median average, which is the state average, which is in dark yellow, you really can't see it, the 14,917. Uh, 9, 14, if Queen Anne's County, if we just actually had the state average in and of itself, it's about another $1,500 per student. That's almost nearly $12 million more than we would receive in our operating budget to be able to uh, meet the individual needs of our, of our district. So you can see, as that varies across the state, uh, widely. Our maintenance of effort, uh, which is by law that the, uh, our local funding, which actually has to uh, maintain the funding that we've had in prior years, uh, being that our, our enrollment is at 7,751, that's actually one student more than we had last year. So that $7,262.50 is what we get in Queen Anne's County per student. And so that number generates our, our revenue locally. You'll notice the $2 million, over $2 million down at the bottom, there are students that we can't count in our overall funding. And the majority of those students are in pre-K. And so when you remove that number, if we were able to, uh, we have the responsibility to educate all students. But you, as you can see, there's nearly $2 million that we're not getting, but we're still required to educate those students. That's a, certainly a national conversation, a state conversation as it, as it relates to funding pre-K. Um, certainly that's a, that's a pretty large dollar amount. When we talk about eliminating the achievement gap, that's a, that's a pretty wise investment. As in any organization, whether you're a school system, you're a, you're a corporation, the bulk of your funds go to your people. And that's no different here uh, in our jurisdiction that a little over 80% of our funds that go towards salaries, and they also go towards uh, benefits as well. And then if you look at the next really category is, is really in contracts. So whether that's our bus contract or our services and special education, I mean, that really makes up almost uh, generally about 90% of our overall budget. So we have to report uh, by state law into state uh, budget categories. So if you look at where we spend those, those dollars as it relates to salaries, which you would estimate that the bulk of that goes towards instruction. So we spend nearly uh, about 90% of our budget getting children to school educating them with a high quality educator, and then with support services to that. So whether that's the principal, the assistant principal that helps support that happening, and then getting those kids home safely each and every day, that is the bulk of where we spend our money. So you can see that by the, the employee benefits as well as the instruction, special education, and student support services. So that 90% is going directly to supporting students. So I think that's important when you understand where we spend our money and how we spend our money, because that's a really critical to ensure, as I mentioned earlier, pencil, paper, people are mission critical to ensure that we're gonna eliminate the achievement gap. And we'll talk about that as we get into some system needs. Relatively speaking, we've been very successful as a school system for a lot of different factors. And the most important factor that has led to our success as a school system and any school system that meets with success is because they have highly qualified teachers that are highly skilled at the craft. That's the only thing that will increase student achievement are teachers. And we've been very blessed with that in Queen Anne's County. The second thing to that is having low class size. We know that through research, the lower class size with investing in teachers adds to success. Uh, typically, uh, our trend are in working in uh, the area of professional development, providing those adequate resources to teachers, our use of data analysis, and then also looking at the, the factors around high quality instructional leadership. Because we know that the only factor that influences student achievement 
in the future. That has the most direct impact on student behavior. The principal and those leaders have the most direct impact on teacher behavior. As we talk about alignment and how we support resources from central office to be able to do that. Just like any other school system, even though our school system has met with success, there's always work to do. Our number one priority as a school system is to completely eliminate the achievement gap. What we're seeing in our trend data is that we're seeing disparities among our African American students, uh, our students of poverty, uh, our English language learners, our special education students. We're, we see significant gaps. That has to be our number one priority to be mission critical. With that is a renewed focus on equity, equality, diversity, and race relations that also play a key factor into that. This past spring, we had a curriculum management audit that opened our eyes uh, to some areas in which we've got to work on. Uh, in those five standards, it looks at governance and leadership, policy development, took a deep dive into the curriculum and trying to understand the alignment to that, looked at equity and equality across the system. So how well are our students when they enter our jurisdiction, which I always find it fascinating that our pre-kindergarten students that are in our school system today, here in 2016, will graduate in the year 2030. They'll be in eighth grade in the year 2026, and they'll be in grade three in the year 2021. So we talk about this group of students and how they move, we've got to be able to look to the future to be able to eliminate that achievement gap. Also with that, it's very important within uh, the curriculum man management is that we look at professional development. We look at uh, how well we're actually providing those supports to our teachers. And last is how we're using our resources effectively and efficiently to our bottom line. I'm a huge advocate for early learning and school readiness. What we're finding right now in the school system is that our achievement gap is beginning about the middle of pre-kindergarten. Right now, going into kindergarten, we have almost 50% uh, of our students that are not ready to do kindergarten level work. About 100% 100, 100 of our students that come out of Head Start are not ready for to do grade level work in kindergarten. In grade three, what we found by the end of the year, although we're in the second year of our park assessment, is that 60% of our students at the end of grade three aren't ready to do grade three level work in reading. 50% of those students not mathematics. So we believe as a school system, one of our key focuses has to be on early learning and school readiness to be able to eliminate the achievement gap even before it starts to go forward. Early college and uh, early college pathway programs, dual credit programs, how can we articulate students to be able to earn college credit while they're in high school? We need to be able to look at that as well. Uh, those are very significant needs. We also need to be able to look at uh, compensation for our employee groups, uh, looking at our negotiated agreements. And then certainly uh, our capital requests that we have uh, to be able to maintain our, our high quality school system. Over this past year, we've been doing a lot of work in the alignment uh, to really our, our key indicators in our strategic plan. It's about academic excellence, about providing safe and, and uh, supportive uh, schools. It's also around being able to provide a high quality workforce, and it's also being able to look at organizational effectiveness. Are we using all of our resources to the best of our ability to meet our bottom line of mission critical to be able to close the achievement gap? And certainly, equity is the lens in which we look at all of that. Uh, this past summer, we launched for the very first time uh, our innovation center. And our innovation center was really those things that were uh, generated over the past year that we believe as an organization is our response to the curriculum management audit. We believe if we focus on these five areas strategically as a school system, we'll continue to catapult our success going forward. So look at organizational effectiveness, looking at early learning and school readiness, be able to close the achievement gap, how we're aligning our resources, our, our uh, curriculum, our instructional tools and technology and assessment. Because one of the things that we know is that we provide the highest quality curriculum that we can for our educators, and that is aligned well to be able to follow that, we'll meet with success. And one of the things I believe very strongly about is how much reform initiatives that we've asked our teachers to implement over the last six years. Often we've asked them to do it all the time. So it's not about adding more, it's about going deeper with good practice about what we know. Focusing on, uh, also on leadership, professional development, and then last but not least is our system level performance of how we monitor the progress. Are our students on track in November? Are they off track? What resources do we need to realign and readjust in order to move forward? 
So how can you help? And that's what really tonight is about, is about listening to you as our constituents and as our stakeholders. And the first thing you need to do, and we've been very blessed as a school system to have a great partnership uh, and support from our county commissioners. Uh, last year, our county commissioners funded this over maintenance of effort, and we're grateful for that, that to be such a school system to have a unique partnership with our county commissioners that believe in public education, <laughs> believe in supporting public education. So the first thing that you can do is, is thank them for their continued support. The next thing is really to work within your local community school. And that is to be able to, to seek out your principal of your local community school and to be able to ask them about your individual needs and express your individual needs to them. And last but not least is to come out to sessions like this uh, and also come to our board meetings in which you can, in uh, our public comment section, you can express yourself as it relates to what you believe are the needs of the school system. And then this year, for the very first time, we're actually putting out a survey, uh, which we're actually seeking feedback of folks who can't come out tonight. There's a 13 question survey that asks a variety of questions about how well we're providing our resources to our students. So it's another way that we're gonna collect feedback uh, in order to uh, put together the FY18 budget. So there's more information that you can go to our website and you can look at uh, our current budget, collect as much information as you can. We're so excited that you're here. We're so excited about the opportunity to listen to you and to listen to what you think our greatest needs are because without that, it's your voice that's gonna help us be able to improve and get better. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to come forward and to be able to express yourself on what you believe are some of the greatest needs in our school system. Thank you. First on the agenda um, is Darlene Hackett. Yeah. 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 Good evening, board members, Superintendent Kaluski, Assistant Superintendent Paul, and members of the executive team. My name is Darlene Hackett. I am a teacher, a sixth grade teacher here at Centerville Middle School. I'm here with my teammates, Mrs. Dana Fellows and Mr. Sean McCabe. Centerville Middle School has two interdisciplinary teams at each grade level except one, the sixth grade team. We are members of this incomplete sixth grade team. We are here tonight in support of Mrs. Hudock's budget request for one sixth grade science teacher. I teach two sixth grade math classes, one advanced math class and one science class. Mrs. Dana Fellows teaches two English language arts classes, one advanced ELA class and one science class. Mr. Sean McKay teaches three social studies classes and one science class. As you can see, our current schedule spread us thin. By having a pure interdisciplinary team, it would afford us the opportunity to focus where it truly matters, the success and achievement of our students. Research shows that interdisciplinary teams provide opportunities for student-focused collaboration, enrich lessons and activities within our specific content area, effective timely feedback, team cohesiveness, and parent communication. We feel this request for our missing sixth grade science teacher is necessary for our students and what our students deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 